Hello everyone, my name is Eugene Che and I'm the lecturer for Introduction to Neurobiology. This is our first lecture and uh, let us start now. Throughout this course, um, throughout this course I, intend, I intend to provide you with a basic concept on how the brain works and how our nervous system works. Um, throughout the course, I will not go very deeply into the contents However, I will cover the basics of the content so that you can all grasp a basic concept on how the brain works. Today, before moving on to the actual contents of the lecture, I'll talk about how our brain looks like. Uh, I believe that this is quite important because um, knowing how our brain looks like actually helps understanding the functions. Therefore, uh, if we have a concrete 3D image of our brain inside our, inside our head, it helps a lot in, um, in our future studies. So I hope um, today's uh, lecture would, could help you in uh, having those images in your head. So uh, let's start about talking. Uh, let's start talking about how our brain looks like. So the central nervous system is the main interest of our of us throughout the course and central nervous system is mainly consisted of two parts and these two parts are the brain and the spinal cord the brain is this lumpy part on the top The spinal cord is the long part on the bottom. The brain is consisted of several parts and to look at in a big way. This part is called the cerebrum. This part is called the cerebellum. And this is the spinal cord. So, as you guys would all know, the brain is something that is located inside our skull, inside our head. It, it weighs about 1,350 grams on average for Koreans. And it is a very important organ in our body because it is the organ that governs our whole body. So it processes information that comes in and out of the brain and it uh, gives out any orders to the other organs to, of our body to maintain our survival and uh, uh, continue on uh, some higher functions such as execution, perception, cognition that makes human human. The spinal cord is something like a gateway between the peripheral body and the brain. So the nerves, uh, the information from the periphery of our body, uh, such as sensory organs, um, is conveyed through the nerves that go into the spinal cord and then up to the spinal cord uh, into the brain. And if there, there is something that the brain has to give out order to the peripheral part of our body, the information is conveyed uh, down to the spinal cord and through the nerves from the spinal cord uh, out to the uh, periphery of our body, such as the motor, motor organ. So today, we'll uh, focus more on how the brain works. This is the gross, uh, gross image of our brain. And it is viewed from the upper part, so we're looking down at our brain. This here, you can witness a long fissure along along this red line. This is something called the interhemispheric fissure. This interhemispheric fissure is interhemisphere fissure because it divides between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. This is the left hemisphere of the cerebrum. 
this is the right hemisphere of the cerebrum. And here, this is the cerebrum, and here we can uh, see a little part of our cerebellum. Um, another thing that we can notice in our cerebrum is that there are many wrinkles. The main reason that there are wrinkles in the cerebrum, the surface of the cerebrum, is because uh, it's in order to increase the surface area of the surface of our brain. Uh, the reason that we need a large surface area of our brain is because the neurons, the neuronal cell body of the cerebrum, is mainly located in the surface, the surface uh, which we call, we call uh, cerebral cortex. And in this cerebral cortex, which is located in the outer part of the cerebrum, the cell, neuronal cell body is uh, concentrated. Therefore, in order to have more neurons and uh, therefore uh, uh, form more complicated brain, we need more surface area on the surface of cerebrum, and therefore uh, there are wrinkles. Um, there are many, many types of wrinkles, uh, many wrinkles and Mainly, there are two types of such wrinkles. Um, one type is this uh, uh, trowel, and the name for this is sulcus. And there is this hill, and the name for this is gyrus. So there are many gyri and many sulci in our cerebrum. And there are a few um, gyri and sulci that we should uh, concentrate on, so we, we should focus on, and we, it is good for us to know their names. And <clears throat> one sulcus that is very important for us to know is something called central sulcus. This is these two big sulcus along here. So these are called central. And the gyrus right in front of the central sulcus is called the precentral gyrus. And the uh, gyrus that is located right uh, uh, the back part of the uh, central sulcus is. This is post central drivers. So, therefore, basically, mm, we have a central circus and two drivers in, the, uh, in both sides of the sulcus. And the reason that the pre central drivers and post central drivers is important is because pre central drivers has the uh, function of primary motor cortex and the post central gyrus has the function of primary somatosensory cortex Therefore, uh, these two parts are very, very important in the motor system and the somatosensory system, respectively. And therefore, uh, it is uh, good for us to know the location of the sulcus and gyrus. And uh, furthermore, the central sulcus is the um, standard, uh, standard points, uh, the point where we divide between the frontal lobe and parietal lobe, which, which is something that I'll talk about in a minute. So these, this was the gross feature of our brain, viewed from the up part. And now, let's view our brain from the lateral part. So we viewed, we are now viewing our brain uh, from the sideways. So as you can see here, this is the cerebrum here. And this is a cerebellum. The cerebellum looks like a smaller version of the cerebrum, so it is named cerebellum. And um, 
The cerebrum is consisted of mainly four parts. The first part is the frontal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. It is located in the front. This is the frontal lobe. And this is the temporal lobe. And this is the occipital lobe. Occipital lobe. And this is the parietal lobe. Parietal lobe. There are uh, distinctive sulcus that uh, divides such uh, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, and parietal lobe. However, we will not talk about that very deeply. But um, as I told you before, the central sulcus is the uh, the sulcus that divides between the frontal lobe and parietal lobe. And here, you can see a very um, distinctive very distinctive uh, sulcus here. Actually, it is very big that can be called a fissure here, this fissure. This divides between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe, and the name of this fissure, fissure is um, sylvian fissure. It is also called the lateral fissure, but sylvian fissure, lateral fissure, it is basically the same thing. So, um, this is uh, the this is the uh, ring that is viewed from the uh, lateral part, and here we can see something uh, right beneath the cerebrum, and this is something called the brainstem. It is not very visible visible right now, but this is a very important part of our brain because. If our brainstem, brainstem is destroyed, we cannot uh, continue on our survival. So this is directly related to our very survival, our life, uh, life-sustaining uh, activities such as heartbeat or breathing. Even if our cerebrum is destroyed, uh, we may be deficient in some functions. However, we can still survive. However, when the brainstem is severely destroyed, um, it is very likely that we will eventually die. And here, from the end of the brainstem, the spinal cord extends like this. Uh, next, we'll look at our brain from the base. Now we can see the brainstem more clearly because we went, we came here to the base of the brain. This part is the brainstem, although it is not complete. This part of our brainstem is called the pons, and this part of the brainstem is called the medulla. Its full name is medulla oblongata. And the spinal cord extends uh, from the end of the medulla to our spinal cord. So this is the cerebe cerebellum, and this is the cerebrum, and this is the temporal lobe and the base of the frontal lobe. And this is pr pretty much. So, now let's cut the brain so that we can look at, uh, look, we can go in, into the brain. Uh, before uh, showing you the sections of the uh, cutted brain, I would like to first categorize uh, several sections. Um, suppose that we look at our brain from our front, then our brain will look like this. There is the interhemispheric fissure here, going on here, and we are viewing our brain from very, very, very front. We will, we are looking at somebody's face directly. Then we can cut the brain right along the interhemispheric fissure, and it is cut like this. So the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere is separated with each with from each other. Then we call the this section sagittal section. Of course, we can cut right in the interhemispheric fissure, but we can still cut in like slightly uh, in the right side, slightly in, on the left side. These are all called sagittal section, but 
uh, especially especially when we cut the brain in the uh, along the interhemispheric fissure, we call it mid sagittal section. Next, uh, suppose that we are viewing our brain from the uh, lateral side, from the sideways, then our brain will look like this, in this spinal cord. And suppose our uh, knife goes this way, so that we can uh, separate the front and the back of our brain. And this section is called the coronal section. And next, we can cut our brain in this direction so that the upper part and the lower parts of the brain is separated from each other. This section is called the transverse section. Of course, um, there can be many coronal sections, like here, 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 here. And there can be many transverse sections. And there can be many sagittal sections. But today, we'll just look at one sagittal section, the mid -sagittal, sagittal section, and one coronal section, and one transverse section. So first of all, let's look at the mid sagittal section. This is the mid-sagittal section. When we cut the brain along the interhemispheric fissure, the brain, the section of the brain looks like this, and it reveals many interesting um, features that we could not see uh, when we were just observing the uh, external view, external fissure features of our brain. So first of all, we can see our cerebrum and the cerebellum. And we can more clearly see our brainstem. This is our brainstem. Our brainstem is consisted mainly of three parts. First, it is um, midbrain. Next, it is the pons. We saw that in the previous slide. And the middle one. We also saw that. This is midbrain, this is pons, and this is the middle. And uh, this um, spinal cord extends uh, to the bottom. Also, we can see something large and white here. This is something called corpus callosum. The role of this is to link between the right and the left hemisphere. Corpus callosum is uh, consisted of uh, bundles of nerves, and the nerves uh, connect the hemispheres, two hemispheres. Also, uh, right under the corpus, corpus callosum, we can see here this um, bundle of cells. Actually, um, this here, this point, this point is the point where it uh, connects to uh, to lumps of cells called thalamus. So our thalamus is looks like a potato like this. And it is there's interthalamic adhesion. Thalamus. And this is interthalamic adhesion. So this is interthalamic adhesion, and if we go a little bit uh, backward, we can see one lump of thalamus, and if we come a little front, we can see another lump of thalamus. And this, so this is thalamus. And right in the um, bottom, right, uh, a, lo a little bit lower to the thalamus, there is hypothalamus. And hypothalamus is important in maintaining homeostasis, and it controls hormonal uh, functions. 
and do important things like that. Oh, and Thalamus uh, uh, plays the role of relay junction. It uh, the information that comes into the brain is uh, is um, gathered up in the thalamus, and the th from the thalamus, that information again is again um, conveyed into the cerebrum, into the cerebral cor cortex, and uh, the information from the cerebral cortex goes into the thalamus, and then from the thalamus it goes down to the brainstem or then and down to the uh, spinal cord or down, uh, down to the cranial nerves, etc. And as you can see here, this is the something called this is the central sulcus, and here you can see large sulcus, and this is the frontal lobe, this is the occipital lobe, and this is the parietal lobe. Prior to lobe, occipital lobe, and this is the part of temporal lobe. And also, there are um, empty spaces where there uh, it is not empty, but there are spaces where something called CSF is filled. And CSF stands for cerebrospinal. Fluid. So it means that it is a fluid that is filled inside the cere cerebrum, which is also uh, the brain, and the spinal cord. So there are a few spaces in our brain, and there are mainly uh, three large spaces inside our brain. So uh, the three, uh, four, ma uh, the three types of spaces are. Lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and fourth ventricle. Actually, this is not three ventricles, but it is four because there are two lateral ventricles. So, uh, in total, there are four ventricles in our brain. And here we cannot see the lateral ventricle, but we can see the third and the fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle is located right here. This is the fourth ventricle. And here, this is the space for the um, third ventricle. So right in between the thalamus, there are, there is a third ventricle. And the lateral ventricle is located a uh, little bit over to this here in um, both hemispheres. And this here, the third and the fourth ventricle is uh, linked with each other with uh, something called cerebral aqueduct. And cerebral aqueduct is located right here. So the ventricular system is here, here, and the lateral ventricle. The uh, cerebral spinal flu fluid is formed in something called um, choroid plexus, and it is um, located. Does that the choroid plexus is located in the uh, lining of the ventricles, and that and after it is formed, it uh, it fills the ventricles, and then the uh, fluid of the ventricles are drained into the venous. Uh, that uh, flows along the brain, and it goes into our blood vessels. And now we have uh, seen the mid-sagittal section of our brain, now it is the coronal section, one of the many coronal sections that we can make. And here, this is the lateral ventricle, so here are the two parts of the lateral ventricle, and here the uh, layer that um, separates those two ventricles is called septum pellucidum. And here, this is the corpus callosum. And this is the third ventricle. 
and the um here you can see two kinds of colors um one is the grayish colored part and one is the white part the grayish part is called gray matter and the white part is called the white matter The reason that gray matter is called gray matter is um, uh, the reason that gray matter is gray is because there are cell bodies located in the gray matter. So the neuronal cell body has the color of this, and they are concentrated on these regions. So um, these regions, regions called gray matter, has the color of something some gray. And the reason that white matter is white is because there are nerves and axons of the neuron are located in the located in the white matter. Um, therefore, uh, the white matter is white and the green matter is gray. So if you see uh, something with color. You can say that there are many neural cell bodies located in the um, in the part of the brain, and if a part of the brain is co colored white, uh, you can say that there are many axons located uh, in the white matter. Um, as I so said before, the um, cerebral cortex, there are many cell bodies uh, concentrated on those regions, so it is not very surprising that uh, the cortex part, the surface of the brain. Is actually the gray matter. However, there are also parts where there are some grayish, um, grayish parts in the middle of the brain, in the inside of the brain, and these parts, especially in the in here, it is something called the basal ganglia. This part, this part. This part, this part, and this uh, mainly uh, is related to motor function, but we'll talk about that later. And also, there are many other parts. Um, this is something called hippocampus, which uh, is related to memory function. And this is the mammalian memory body. And this is the insular co cortex, which is a uh, um, the part of cerebral cortex that is hidden due to the uh, temporal lobe which is located here. And this is the interhemispheric fissure. And that's basically it. So, And this is the, uh, the part where the lateral fissure, the sylvium fissure, is located at. And that's basically it. Now we'll look at the transfer section of our brain. And something significant that we can look at is this white part. Actually, there are mainly three parts that connect between the left and the right hemisphere. And one is corpus callosum. We looked at it just before. And the second is anterior commissure. The third is the posterior commissure. The anterior commissure and the posterior commissure is named like that because it is um, each located in the anterior part of our brain and posterior part of our brain, which means the front part and the back part. And this is the anterior commissure, and we cannot see the posterior commissure right now, but this I think this is the posterior commissure. So this these parts links the left and the right hemisphere, because often the uh, coordination between the left part and the right part of our cerebrum is very important in um, performing normal uh, functions. And we can see here this is the basal ganglia, as we saw just before. And this is a part of our cere cerebellum. And um, you can see very 
uh, clearly the gray matter and the white matter also in this section. And this part is the hippocampus. And this part is the insular co cortex. This is the extension of interhemispheric fissure. And here, this is temporal lobe, this is the occipital lobe, temporal lobe again, frontal lobe, frontal lobe. So, um, so we, um, today we uh, briefly looked at the sections of our brain and the gross feature of our brain. I understand that it is quite hard uh, to make a concrete 3D image of the brain inside our body by just simply looking at this uh, three representative sections. However, um, uh, I believe that this might help. And um, with you can, if you want to see more sections, we you can uh, search in the internet or search in the book to look at more sections so you can have a more concrete concrete image of our brain inside your body. And it is quite important to have such image because um, if you know how the brain looks like and if you know what parts cons what parts of our brain is located in each uh, part of our brain, um, it is more easy to uh, have a visual uh, vi vivid uh, concept and idea on how our brain works. So it will help out when you uh, do future studies, especially when we study systems in your biology. And um, I, this might not be, uh, my lecture so far might not be very sufficient in order to know everything in the anatomy part because I just briefly um, went over the only the very strong significant part of our brain. But I hope that you would uh, cover that up with uh, follow following studies and this is the end of lecture one and thank you.